You're watching Good Day Siouxland with Mallory Smith, Nick Wilson, and meteorologist Victor Perez. From KCAU 9 News, this is Good Day Siouxland. Good morning. It is 645 on this Thursday morning. I'm Mallory Smith. Nick has the morning off. I'm Victor Perez. Like I said, Nick skated away from the storms that we saw last night. He's missing out on a good morning, though, because we have started off uh, pretty calm, pretty nice, even with a touch of pink in the sky. I don't know. I kind of wish I was like Nick and I wasn't working. But we're here and we're seeing that it's pretty quiet. Some of you folks heading out, uh, heading to work yourselves, so looking like it's starting to get a little bit busier out there as we're taking a look out at the Highway 20 and Highway 75 Junction. Looking like more and more traffic is starting to back up now. I know sometimes I've seen some of the cars on the back not be able to make it through with one of those lights, so you might have to go through a couple of cycles. As you'll see, the temperatures in the region have been reported in the 60s for the viewing area. We're still reporting in the 60s, and we're going to be warming up throughout the daytime with chances for severe thunderstorms as we see marginal severe chances through much of central Siouxland and some slight severe thunderstorm chances as you look further west. So uh, looking like the emphasis for storms is going to be more through Nebraska and southern portions of South Dakota. Back to you. All right, thanks, Victor. Well, after more than three years today, America's COVID-19 federal public health emergency is officially coming to an end. One of the biggest changes that will result is the federal government will no longer provide free vaccines and tests. Those will shift to the commercial market and COVID data tracking will be scaled back. The emergency's closeout also brings an end to vaccination requirements for federal workers and contractors. Health and human service leaders say even though the emergency order comes to an end, COVID-19 remains a public health priority. The order expires at the end of the day. And with the end of the federal public health emergency also comes the end of pandemic era restrictions on asylum seekers known as Title 42. ABC's Lindsay Watts shares new warnings from the Biden administration ahead of the policy's expiration. This morning, migrants are crowding at the southern border. In California, volunteers serve sandwiches in San Diego. Behind us, we have uh, migrants who are asylum seekers, who some of whom have been here for six days, seven days. In Texas, drone footage shows the lines in El Paso. And in Brownsville, the National Guard in place. As Title 42 expires late tonight, President Biden says it's going to be chaotic at the border for a while. Look. The purpose of what we're doing now is making legal immigration more streamlined, illegal immigration shorter term and move, and move in a direction that people know that there's a legal way to get here and not a legal way. A new policy by the Biden administration will require migrant families seeking asylum to be subjected to home curfews and GPS monitoring while immigration officials determine whether they should be deported. We are making it very clear that our border is not open, that crossing irregularly is against the law, and that those who are not eligible for relief will be quickly returned. House Republicans expected to vote today on a new bill that would further restrict asylum and build more of the border wall. President Biden says he'll veto the bill if it passes. If you don't like our bill, what's your answer? What's your plan? What are you going to do? Aid workers say while some migrants are aware of Title 42, many are not. They're risking everything to come to the United States because they cannot be in their home country. Another new rule by the Biden administration says migrants must have paperwork filed before they arrive or they'll have to wait five years before applying again. Lindsay Watts, ABC News, Washington. And Title 42's expiration won't only affect border states, but the entire country, including right here in Iowa. But some advocates in the Hawkeye state say that's not necessarily a bad thing. Well, we're glad that Title 42 is coming to an end. We've had many people fleeing violence from Central America or called the Northern Triangle who are seeking refuge here in our country. Uh, 2.8 million times uh, refugees or people seeking asylum have been turned back uh, since 2020 due to Title 42, which is an old uh, uh, law that goes back to 1944. Henry says the need now is money for staff and processing officers to help with a backlog of cases for asylum seekers who need their paperwork validated. He estimates once the situation has settled, Iowa could see about a thousand new residents. 
And elsewhere in Iowa, today the State Board of Regents is expected to propose a tuition increase for undergraduate students at three state-supported universities. The hike could be as much as 3.5% for resident students and 4% for non-residents. The board asked lawmakers for a $32 million increase in funding during the recently completed legislative session, but no additional general appropriation was made. If the rate hike is approved by Regents on Thursday, in-state students at the University of Iowa and Iowa State will see a jump of $305, while the University of Northern Iowa will see a spike of $285. And meanwhile, in South Dakota, who can attend events on college campuses is changing after that state's Board of Regents passed a new policy Tuesday night. One Republican state representative who brought forward legislation to address our, quote, lewd or lascivious events at state-supported universities says it's a step in the right direction. I think this is a good step. I like what I'm seeing. I like the discussions they're having. Um, but I want them to really think about what what do the people in South Dakota want their dollars used for at higher ed? And among other changes, the new policy will prohibit minors from attending university-sponsored events that include specific sexual activities, obscene live conduct, or any material or performances that could be considered harmful to minors as defined by state law. Any programming that may contain those situations, violence, or other explicit content must include content descriptors, such as may contain explicit content on any promotional material for the event. The policy was inspired by a recent drag show hosted by the South Dakota State University Gender and Sexualities Alliance Group. Carr says he hopes that more action is taken in the future to make sure such events only happen off campus. All right, well, switching gears now, it's time to meet today's Stray of the Day. Every day we share a pet picked up by Sioux City Animal Adoption Rescue who's waiting to go home. So today we're talking about Hyde. There he is, a one to two year old male orange tabby cat. He was found on the 1700 block of West Street. The rescue says he's a big guy with a big heart. He's mellow, he's laid back, and he's very friendly. Hyde is available for adoption now. And if you've lost your pet or if you're looking to adopt, or even if you just like to sponsor a pet for adoption, you can visit the rescue's website. That's at SiouxCityAnimalRescue.com. Personally, those are all the characteristics I'm really looking for in a pet, especially mm -hmm. a little cat, very friendly, charismatic, cuddly. I know it's hot temperatures for some cuddling. I've got my air conditioning on blasting instead. Well, I'm still being cheap right now. Well, just, I just got the fans on. But uh, orange cats Fair. normally are said to be Fair. like the most friendly, right? Yes, yes, yeah. definitely friendly animals. But uh, yeah, I don't know if they're liking that heat too much. He looks like he had some longer hair there going on. My cats, I know. I was trying to take them out on a walk. I actually wanted to tell you that. I'm trying to do it again. We're bringing it back. Okay. Well, but I don't know if today's the best day, you know, with the showers and storms that we'll be seeing through the afternoon hours. Right now, not happening. Instead, what we got is some winds flowing out from the southeast across the reeling area, still flowing out between 5 and 15 miles per hour as we see them. And with stronger winds to our northwest, out through South Dakota, where they saw some showers and storms, which you can see here as they move north into the region out there. Here in Sioux City, we're starting to see some develop again after the batches that we saw around midnight and what we saw over by Lyon County with hail that was significant in size. We'll continue to monitor that as the storm cast shows that the emphasis will be through the afternoon hours here. After midday, more robust scattered showers and storms developing as we go forward into the early evening, but then it's pretty quiet as we head towards the evening with some showers and storms favored out in western Siouxland, far west for the most part out there, as we'll have conditions that are expected to be a little bit more impactful with conditions that are going to show that we continue on with accumulation expected to be a little bit on the lower end here as we go forward uh, topping off closer towards a quarter of an inch a little bit more than a half inch as we see that the emphasis for showers will be out in western portions of the viewing area we've been bringing those totals down as they uh, inch closer towards one inch instead as temperatures today will rise up close to 80 degrees most of the viewing area as we see scattered storms through the afternoon with temperatures that will will be in the upper 70s and low 80s both today and tomorrow. We cool off a little bit here on Saturday as we see a lack of storms and just showers for the weekend as uh, clearing conditions take place over the next week. All right, thanks, Victor. 
Well, now let's turn to sports, where a Siouxland athlete will soon be traveling to Berlin, representing Team USA in the Special Olympics. Anthony Mitchell has the details in your morning sports wrap. Good morning, Siouxland. What started as a hobby a decade ago became the passion of one Sioux City native, with that passion blossoming into a talent that will allow this Sioux City East alum to shine on the world's biggest stage. That's the story in our newest Sports Spotlight. I, I want to say all plus my Sassy. Those were the words Mitchell Betsworth used to describe his feeling when he found out he was selected to compete for Team USA at next month's Special Olympics World Games in Berlin. The Sioux City East alum is one of 133 athletes selected to represent our nation while being one of nine powerlifters set to compete. Betsworth was introduced to powerlifting at East High School in 2012 by a group of teachers and aides. Mitchell excelled and went on to compete at his first Special Olympics USA Games in 2014. Now after a trio of appearances in the USA Games, the Black Raiders alum is excited for what's next. And it's so happy to this. I waited, I waited to this. I thought to uh, uh, the team of uh, the USA. I, I waited to this. I'm so happy and I'm dying. The sport has given Mitchell many different opportunities, from his beginnings at East High to celebrating his 2016 Special Olympics Iowa Male Athlete of the Year Award with Peyton Manning and an appearance in Sports Illustrated. Betsworth has enjoyed all the moments that came from the countless hours he's put in throughout the years. But regardless of where the sport has taken him, his why has never changed. I am so happy this and I way do deal and I do I do the, uh, I do the have fun. I have I have a record talk Mark Neal and uh, May 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 Etsy. He died too. A hobby that started in high school that eventually evolved into Mitchell having his own workout room in his house through representing Sioux City and the country at the Special Olympics. Mitchell serves as an inspiration to many that look up to him and want to follow in his footsteps. Follow on the team. Yeah, I do. All to teaching. Mitchell will have the chance to compete for four medals, participating in the squat, bench press, deadlift, and combination events. Betsworth will be headed to Berlin with the team within the next couple of weeks with the opening ceremony taking place on June 17th and the World Games on July 2nd. Both of those will be airing right here on KCAU 9. That'll be all for sports. Have a good day, Sulan. Now let's take a look at this morning's top stories. It's what you need to know before you go. In eastern Iowa yesterday, as more than 70 high school students signed with 16 different employers across seven different fields of work, Governor Reynolds signed SF-318, also known as the Registered Apprenticeship Act. The new law creates a state office of apprenticeship as a part of the Department of Workforce Development. Teachers say apprenticeships can help set young Iowans up for success. In today's society, you can have a very successful career coming out of high school with some levels of certification uh, and, and depending on what pathway you choose can, can come right out of high school with a very successful career. The new law also provides annual funding to support the growth of new registered apprenticeship programs, particularly programs that feature high demand occupations. All right, well, we definitely are starting off with a calmer day, but like you said, it could change throughout the day. We're kind of keeping an eye on the afternoon hours. Yeah, there's potential for some severe weather okay. as we go through the afternoon. Right now, we have seen some storms starting to develop out to our east, but we'll be more concerned through the afternoon hours with temperatures rising up to 80 degrees. And then we'll see that and the 9 on 9 here shows the conditions that are going to be warm today and tomorrow and start to cool off a little bit with the weekend as we see a transition from those showers and storms to just showers on Saturday, bookending through the overnight hours, both for Friday overnight into Saturday morning and Saturday overnight into Sunday morning. That's why we got those rain chances for Mother's Day as conditions will be cooler for Mother's Day as well, but still uh, closer to seasonal. We'll see that afterwards through the upcoming week, we see temperatures rise up into the 70s and get warm again, seeing some 80s as we see ex more extended sunshine finally in Siouxland. I was going to say, I know it's one of our cooler days of the week. I think it's the coolest day of the week is Mother's Day. But it's going to feel like one of the best, I think. It's going to be pretty good. Uh, I'm looking forward to just to more sunshine. Yes, yes, me too as well. All right, well, thanks so much for watching and have a great rest of your morning.